ladies and gentlemen, you're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Target Field, where the Yankees are looking to get away with a series victory as the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the Yankees against the Twins in the rubber game of a three game set from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside John Flaherty. So happy to be with you this Thursday evening for Yankees baseball on Yes. John, last night Yankees had their seven game winning streak snap, but as they go for the series win today, they turn to a guy who you feel pretty good turning to, Garrett Cole. Well, when you think of Garrett Cole's season, Ryan, it started off slow, but he has been on a dominant run lately, and it continued against the Detroit Tigers. Seven shutout innings against the Tigers, and the biggest difference for Cole from his first three starts to his last seven or eight, it's fastball command, being able to dot the outside corner. He was flirting with a perfect game, six and two thirds until Jonathan Scope had that base hit to ruin those dreams, but just another masterpiece by Garrett Cole. And he has really dominated the Twins. Only three career starts against them, but 3 0 with an 0 9 5 ERA. Now one of the hitters who Cole will face tonight Byron Buxton we know the injury is always a problem for Buxton throughout his career but he has looked quite healthy in this series thus far. Yeah and the twins signed him to that long extension and the goal is trying to find ways to keep him healthy. He DH'd in the first game of this series. He's been playing center field the second game and tonight the third. But Ryan we're getting a glimpse in these three games and how talented he is. That's going to be the home run that knocked Nestor Cortez out of the game his 13th of the year. He's a leader. He shows emotion and he's a very talented superstar player. The power number certainly there for Buxton who has 13 homers that OPS at 832 and you see the damage he's done in this series thus far. Well over the last week Aaron Hicks has started to come alive at the plate. The Yankee outfielder chats with our Meredith Morakovitz. That's next right here on Yes. Meredith Morocco. It's alongside Aaron Hicks. Aaron, you seem to be heating up at the plate this series. Four hits so far. What's been the biggest difference for you? Uh, just pretty much just seeing the ball. Um, seeing the ball a lot longer. Being able to recognize pitches a little bit better. Um, and just try to hit it hard pretty much is what I've been trying to do. You're back out there in left field. Are you feeling more comfortable out there? Uh, not really, but it's starting to come together. Um, the more and more games I, and reps I get out there, um, the better I'm going to be. You were first round pick for the Twins. What type of memories come back? What do you remember about your time with Minnesota? Uh, man, uh, I mean, I came up through the minors through here, um, made my big league debut here. So uh, just all good memories, you know, um, just uh, all the coaching staff and everybody that helped me get to where I am today. Um, you know, I really appreciate that. Aaron, thanks for the time. Best of luck tonight. Yep, thank you. Plenty more to come here on the Yes Network. When we get back, Ryan Rucco will be joined by John Flaherty. First pitch coming your way after the break. By Cadillac, gravitate to greatness and visit your Tri-State Cadillac dealer today. By Burke Rehabilitation, get back in action with Burke. And by FanDuel Sportsbook, make every moment more. Members of the Yankees and Twins who have played for both franchises and are in action tonight. Let's take a look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the Yankees. It's another gorgeous late spring night, 78 degrees in Minneapolis and just a teeny bit of a breeze. Yankees and Twins getting ready to play the rubber game of this three game set. Yankees took the opener 10-4, Twins an 8-1 win last night. Garrett Cole will be the man to try and deliver the Yankees a series victory Tonight, Yankees 13 2 and 2 in the 17 series they've played thus far this season. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineup for the Yanks. It's brought to you by TikTok. It starts on TikTok. DJ LeMahieu leading off, Aaron Judge in the two hole back there in center field. 
Anthony Rizzo DHs, bats third. Josh Donaldson will clean up and play third base. Glaber Torres bats fifth. Aaron Hicks behind him. Hicks has had a nice series. Just heard from him with Meredith Morakovitz. IKF batting seventh at short. Jose Trevino is back behind the plate. And Joey Gallo had a nice opener to this series. Rounds out the Yankees starting lineup. No John Carlos Stanton in tonight's Yankee lineup. He did come through his time in the field last night fine physically. But Aaron Boone had just decided he was going to either give Stanton today or tomorrow off. And last night ended up deciding to go with today. So that's the reason for no Stanton in the Yankee lineup. Well, Ryan, you just went through that lineup for the Yankees. They're going to face a veteran right-hander, Dylan Bundy. It'll be his 10th start of the year. Even record at 3-3, three and three, and the ERA inflated a little bit at 5.57. We'll take a look at our pitcher scanner report on Bundy. Got off to a good start, but his last six starts, he struggled to an ERA of 8.44. And there's some more bad news because he has 15 games against the Yankees and a bad ERA of 6.42 against them. And I'll be paying attention to the Aaron Judge matchup as always. But Aaron has five hits against Bundy. Three of those hits are home runs. Let's take a look at the defense behind Bundy. It is brought to you by your local Tri State GMC dealers. Larnick in left, Buxton in center, Kepler in right, Urshela and Correa on the left side. Correa back at short after he had DH yesterday. Polanco and Arise on the right side. Luis Arise back in there after he missed yesterday's game. And Gary Sanchez. Behind the plate to catch Dylan Bundy. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. They're brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, the Kia keys to the game. This is the rubber game that you had mentioned, Ryan, and the Yankees have been fantastic at winning series this year. 13-2-2 record. And maybe a good night to hit with some of the numbers I just talked about with Dylan Bundy, but after last night's game, Yankees only had four hits, two of those infield hits, and maybe some work for Clay Holmes tonight. He hasn't worked in four days. Yankees obviously would love to get him in this game in a possible save situation with a lead. Yankees have won 14 consecutive season series against Minnesota. These teams will play four games at the stadium later in the season. LeMahieu leading off. And grounds one to second. One pitch, one out. Well, I mentioned that Bundy has faced the Yankees 15 games, so there's going to be no secrets. He's not an overpowering pitcher. That fastball sits right about 90 miles an hour. He will sink it. He's got a slider and a changeup, but more of a finesse pitcher who has to pitch to the corners because he doesn't have that overpowering heater. Here's the matchup you were talking about, John. Aaron Judge with his three career home runs and 19 at bats against Bundy. Takes a ball, 1 0. Oh. Statcast 3D, Google Cloud. Shows us the pitch arsenal for Dylan Bundy. Not a hard thrower. And it's one and two on Judge. Well, Bundy's been around the block a little bit. He knows how to have some success, and that's by pitching backwards, staying out of fastball counts where you have to challenge some hitters. Good job here ahead of Aaron Judge, one and two. Judge stays alive. <laughs> Judge's name. Adorning all leaderboards when it comes to American League rankings. He's eighth in batting average, first in the majors in homers, second in the AL in RBI, first in the AL in runs, first in the majors in slugging.
Well, you just rifle through that whole list and that batting average at 311, eighth in the American League, is what impresses me, Ryan. And that is crushed foul. We know Aaron Judge is a slugger with his 22 home runs. We know he's an RBI guy with his 45, but the ability to have all of that power and have the plate discipline to be a 300 hitter. See how the twins are shifting in the infield. Ball four. Judge comes back to work the walk. And Anthony Rizzo DHing tonight. The step up with one on and one out. Three infielders on the right side for Rizzo. Oh, take a look at the scouting report on our home plate umpire, John Lipka. Fewer high strikes as we saw, saw a judge. Early. Yep. Tight inside corners, hitter friendly. Sixth major league season. It's not a good scouting report for the umpire for Dylan Bundy. I mentioned he likes to pitch the corners and just off. And if Lipka is not going to give him an inch or two off the plate, he's going to have to come over. Well, there's another one of those high strikes that's clearly in the K box and called a ball. So in 11 pitches, we've already seen two of those. As I mentioned might be a good night to hit, obviously, with the umpire behind home plate and also Bundy out on the mound and. The Yankees last night it just did not look very good offensively only four hits two of those were infield hits. Good night to break out. I think Ryan to be fair in these two games I mean the Yankees were sloppy defensively the first night. Ended up. Scoring enough runs to win that game last night kind of nothing going on offensively so nice to take this final game and get out of here. Aaron Boone mentioning to me before the game last night was the first time that he can remember in a long time where he's actually thinking who am I going to need to cover some innings at the end of the game. Yeah. And do I get Aaron Judge an inning off which he ended up doing. But it, there, every game this year has been competitive. Obviously Yankees off to a great start but even the games that they've lost they've been one swing away. So a little different night for Aaron Boone last night. Last night was the first time this season the Yankees had lost a game by six or more runs. It's the first time they'd even trailed by that. Runner going, Rizzo swinging, and into right field it goes. Judge will scoot easily to third, and the Yankees are in business. Runners on the corners and just one out. Well, Aaron Judge on the move. Anthony Rizzo puts this ball in play after an 0 for 4 last night. Just kind of comes around it a little bit. Keeps it on the ground just out of the reach of Polanco. There goes Judge. A little hit and run. Yankee set up here first and third in the first inning, trying to jump out to an early lead. You can see Aaron peeking in. You pick up the baseball, and then the rest is on you. Get yourself to third base and set up a first inning for Josh Donaldson. So Donaldson shifts up to the cleanup spot with Stanton getting the night off. Three infielders on the left side, wide open right side for Donaldson. And he takes ball one. For Donaldson, obviously, you would love to do some damage with the long ball, but against a guy like Bundy, you really just got to hang in there and be disciplined. Situational at bat hitting. Whole right side of the infield is open. The infield is playing back defensively. They're giving you a run. Put this ball in play on the ground or sacrifice fly to the outfield. 2 and 0 on Donaldson. Good take there. That's where Bundy wants to live. Down in the strike zone, just off the plate. Donaldson didn't even flinch. That is down as well. 
And it's 3 and 0 on Josh Donaldson. With all that discipline, you put yourself in the driver's seat here, 3 and 0. Donaldson, you're looking for one pitch, one spot. If you get it, turn it loose. If not, look forward to the next one. Pops it up into right. Should be deep enough to get home. Judge Kepler lines it up. Will fire into second. Judge scores. Sacrifice fly from Josh Donaldson. And the Yankees take an early 1-0 lead. A very disciplined at bat right there for Josh Donaldson. That's why he's been a good run producer and RBI guy for a long time. Make sure you get the pitch you can get underneath drive it to the outfield easy sacrifice fly in an early lead. So a productive at bat from Josh Donaldson here's Glaber Torres Torres turns on that hits it deep to left but with room making the catch is learning to end the inning with the Yankees push one across and now hand the ball to Garrett Cole in the bottom of the first. It's on TikTok. It's a good offensive team. You look at that lineup. Luisa Rise, Byron Buxton, Carlos Correa, the first three, then Polanco, Kepler, and Sanchez. Larnick, Gio Urshela, and Jose Miranda who had three hits last night rounding out the Twins starting lineup. Well, that Twins lineup in for a tough assignment with Garrett Cole finishing up his warm up tosses be his 12th start of the year record at five and one and the year a under three at two point seven eight. Take a look at our pitcher scanning report on Cole looking to get the rotation back on track. That's part of the responsibility of being a number one starter. Tyone wasn't great in this series. Nestor Cortez wasn't great last night. Cole looking to get back on track in his last eight starts at ERA just over two at 2.03 and a big reason why fastball command fastball control being able to dot the outside corner to a right handed hitter. Let's take a look at the defense behind him brought to you by your local tri-state GMC dealers Hicks Judge Gallo across the outfield Donaldson IKF on the left side Torres LeMahieu on the right and Trevino behind the plate. Cole has dominated the Twins and his only three career starts against them. A sub one ERA and three and oh. And he deals strike one to Arise. Well, Arise back in the lineup tonight. You see that batting average leads all of Major League Baseball, gives the Twins some energy early in the lineup. Leads Major League Baseball and on base percentage as well. Stare in there to Garrett Cole and that cutter that was up and in. Ninety eight top of the zone one and two. Well it's always an evaluation process with a starting pitcher like Garrett Cole you go to the bullpen you go through your warm ups. You're trying to recognize what do I have working tonight but when you make that walk from the bullpen to the dugout now out to the mound you got to go through that process all over again. Looking at fastball command which I mentioned has really been the difference over his last eight starts. First couple of fastballs I would say velocity good fastball command not great that missed off the plate by a bit. The other fastballs were middle of the plate when they were supposed to be at the corners. That ball is crushed. Long gone to right field and it's 1 1. A leadoff home run for Luis Arise. And he ties this game up. Well, we talked about Arise with his batting average, leads all of Major League Baseball, the on base percentage. Not known as much of a power guy, only his second home run of the year. But when you throw a changeup and it just sits middle of the plate, even a high average hitter like Arise is going to be able to drive it 
Notice a little peek out to Garrett Cole again. After that cutter up yeah. and in, he said, okay. Okay. Here is Buxton. Buxton makes it back to back. Destroyed into the third deck for Byron Buxton. And a rude greeting for Garrett Cole. Ryan, we highlighted Buxton in the open two hour show, and the reason why the talent just jumps off the screen when Buxton is a healthy player. And again, this was a little cutter or a slider or trying to get me over. Buxton, obviously not waiting around, drilled that home run number 14. Twins answer right back in the bottom of the first. And now Correa. For a Twins lineup that went whole is a really good long lineup. Another look. A little get me over slider. The pitcher's thinking, you know what, he's not going to be swinging. He'll just give me strike one with the slider, but Buxton all over it. So a bad change up to a rise. And not a very good slider to Buxton. Now Correa makes it back to back to back. My goodness, a stunning start. As Cole gives up three straight homers. I mentioned the fastball command. The first three that he threw to arise to lead off the game were not located very well. So we've seen a changeup that sat middle ended up in the seats. A slider to Buxton ended up in left field. And now the fastball to Correa. What an answer by the Minnesota Twins. Back to back to back. And again, that's Britt middle of the plate, right down Broadway. Cole off to a rough start. I mean, John, this is just shocking. Again, I go back to the pitcher's scatter report. Cole's season changed as he was commanding his fastball better. See, Buxton just puts his helmet back in the rack, and then he's going to pay attention because this next one's going to go a long way. There it is. Now, Ryan, it's plan B, okay? Yeah. I don't have fastball command. I, I gotta I gotta figure something out here to get through the first inning, get myself into the dugout and regroup. We've seen a knuckle curve here to Polanco. Trying to figure any way to get a couple outs. It's all over the place for Cole. Three runs allowed to the first three batters tonight. He had allowed two runs in his previous 19 career innings against the Twins. And remember Cole last time out against Detroit held a perfect game. Two outs into the seventh. Well Ryan we, we've sat up here now this is the third game we talked about Tyone okay how great he has been and you kind of expect there's going to be yeah. a clunker along the way Nestor Cortez same thing last night but. Garrett Cole, this is shocking. He's been so good. And walks Polanco now. You wonder if there's going to be a conversation at the mound at some point well, soon here. Yeah, here we go. Matt Blake is going to go out there. I thought Trevino, the catcher, should have went out just to give Garrett a little time to regroup. Okay, this is a shock to the system. And I mentioned that evaluation in the bullpen and what you have, and then once you get out to the mound, you got to go through that process all over again. And to be quite honest, Garrett doesn't know what he, he doesn't have anything yeah. right now. He doesn't have fastball command. He doesn't have a breaking ball he can go to. He's trying to throw his change up, but that's sitting middle of the plate. This is find a way to get three outs and regroup. Uh, with that in mind, John, when you're out there at the mound, 
what are you telling Garrett Cole in this sort of situation? Hey, we're going to be okay, right? We're going to figure this out, but we got we got to make an adjustment right now. And whatever that is, I would be talking about what's our off-speed pitch you feel the most comfortable with. And I think Garrett would probably say, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I've thrown my changeup, I've thrown my slider, I've thrown the knuckle curve, and he's missed with all of them. Here is Kepler. Kepler showing bun, trying to beat the shift. Thank you very much. David Cohn pops into my mind every time I see that. Yeah, he's trying to bunt for a base hit with the shift on, but when you're struggling, yeah. like like Garrett Cole is right now, you oh you would say, You'll take that. Bunt it and let's try to get it out so I can take a deep breath and get, get in some sort of a rhythm. Cole has been so locked in. John mentioned the last eight starts. You see the shift here. Last eight, it pitched to a 203 RA. And opponents had slugged just 271 against Cole over those last eight starts. But back to back to back home runs for Minnesota to begin this game against Cole. Went around 0 and 2. Even that, he, he gets the call, Ryan, but he, he worked underneath the cutter there, right? I mean, he, right now, there's not a whole lot of positives going on. And again, it's just find a way, make a pitch. There, he makes a pitch, catches the outside corner. Strike three, first out recorded by Cole tonight. Yeah, this is more like it. This is what we've seen over that run of eight starts that you were just detailing, Ryan. Pitching to the corners with that four seamer. And I, all right, take a deep breath. We got, we got one. I can make a pitch here to Gary Sanchez, possibility of a double play, and just get me back to the dugout to regroup and figure something out. Sanchez and the Twins agreed on a one year nine million dollar deal today to avoid arbitration. Sanchez second most RBI among all catchers this season only Tyler Stevenson with more in baseball. Chase the slider on one. There are those rankings for Gary, who's having a nice season thus far with Minnesota, not at the peak of what we saw when he was an all star, but improved from what we saw the last couple seasons. Well, the Twins have been raving about Gary Sanchez and the work he's done behind the plate. Which the metrics support that as well. There's improvement from a framing standpoint for Gary thus far this season, blocking standpoint. Talked a lot about Garrett Cole trying to figure it out out there out on the mound. And if you're Jose Trevino behind the plate, your mind is spinning too. You're like, what, what can I, what can I call or what can I press a button for with pitch com to, to get a pitch here where I can get a double play ground ball? Is it the slider? Is it the cutter? Is it the knuckle curve? Well, cutter there, good pitch. Because that pitcher catcher meeting that you had probably about two hours ago going through the lineup that has completely gone out the window <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that that feels like it was took place yesterday you see the pitch breakdown because it's survival mode right now two and two on Sanchez and a check at first. Now 
count is now full on Gary Sanchez. Let's see what Rocco Baldelli's thinking here. Polanco has some speed. Three stolen bases been thrown out two times. Obviously, you're trusting Gary Sanchez if you Baldelli sends the runner, not to swing and miss. Possibility to strike him out, throw him out. Not going. Sanchez smokes that down the line foul. Wow. Wow. I would think the way that it's happened, John, has to be startling for Cole. Not just, okay, you give up three runs in the first inning, but the fact that it was three straight homers and then loud foul balls like that. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot, and they're they're not missing. They're teeing off right now. Well, 100, 100 miles an hour, you could dial it up if you're Garrett Cole. Try to make a pitch. Sanchez fouls it off. Yankees have exhausted some of the middle of their pen over the last two games as well. Another 3 2 coming, runner going. Popped up, foul ground, it'll make the seats. We saw a lot of this, John, in the first two games. The Twins. Tough at bats, two strikes, spoiling pitches. Cortez talked about it last night to Meredith. Tyone did the night before. Well, Ryan, there, there's also a feeling when you walk in the box against a guy like Garrett Cole, you better be ready, right? I mean, and they're getting a Garrett Cole who's struggling tonight, so they're taking advantage of that. But I guess my point is when you, you step in against this guy, you expect him to, to dominate and have his good stuff. He doesn't have it, so they're trying to take advantage of him on a bad night. The 3 2, like Sanchez fouls it off again. And again, though, Ryan, look at the, the, the location. It's right down the middle. Yeah. It, it's 98, 99, and 100. But this is just on you. It, it jumps out to me because we haven't seen this the last eight starts. It's been fastballs to the corners. Total command with it. Tonight early on, that's not the case. Look, you're trying to make a pitch. Keep it 3-1 with so much real estate in front of you tonight. A tough battle here. Tenth pitch of the at-bat up coming to Sanchez. And there will be an 11th. There's the pitch sequence. Anything you have conviction in throwing on pitch number 11? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I, you know, you would say knuckle curveball because he's gone really hard, fastball cutter slider, but we haven't seen a good knuckle curve yet. Well, there was a slider, and he caught Sanchez looking. Strike three, so Cole wins that battle. Two down. Cole will take it again, not perfectly located, middle of the plate. Gets away with it. Not only is this is the first time Cole's ever given up back to back to back home runs in his career. It's the most home runs he's ever given up in one inning. And it ties his most home runs given up in a game. Trying to work through it here with an 0-2 count on Larnick. Yeah, good knuckle curve there. And the knuckle curve has been a pitch that we haven't seen a whole lot from Cole this year. But in a situation like this, you, you'll, you'll try anything just to find a way to get through it.
The 0 2. Blocked nicely by Trevino. Went back to the knuckle curve. He's going to throw at least 32 pitches here in the first. One, two. Got him. So three straight strikeouts from Cole after he allowed three home runs. It's the seventh time in baseball history a team started with back to back to back homers. Dot com slash vote to send your favorite New York Yankees players to Los Angeles this summer. Aaron Judge will be there. An eventful first inning. Yankees were able to push a run across against Bundy in the top of the first and then that phase we just saw from Jose Trevino. Yeah he was doing it a lot in the bottom of the first <laughs> twins back to back to back home runs to begin the game. It's just the seventh time in baseball history the team has led off a game with back to back to back home runs. Well, you got to believe there is a conversation between Matt Blake the pitching coach and Garrett Cole something to give him to try to get him back on track. I think of, his, of a Yankee lineup here in the second inning. Love to try to answer back and also give your starting pitcher a little bit more time to regroup. After that trip to the mound for Blake, Cole did end up striking out the final three hitters. I enjoyed that listening to Aaron Hicks talk to Meredith before the game about why he's swinging the bat a little bit better and it's just seeing the ball a little bit longer and, and we haven't seen those big swings. Good take right there. Fourteen of the last twenty seven plate appearances he's reached base that's more of Aaron Hicks. Grounds it into the shift. Polanco will toss him out. Here's Kiner Falefa. Oh and two on IKF. Well, Kiner Falefa is such an aggressive hitter, but taking two strikes, two quick strikes. Wondering part of that plan is to give Garrett Cole a little bit long, more time here in between innings mm. after that long first. Had to swing that time. Pops it up right side. Polanco makes the play. Two down. Doing a little studying over there, Trying maybe. Trying to figure it out, looking at something. Now, obviously, hitters, pitchers, we all have these mechanical keys that keep us locked in or get us back on track if we're going through a tough time. I wonder if Cole's looking at something mechanically, it may be off a little bit. Well, Bundy's trying to. Buck the plan to get Cole rest. 0 oh and 2 now on Trevino. Line drive, base hit, center field. Jose Trevino, a two out single. 
Well, a beautiful piece of hitting as Bundy's talking to himself. Not a great 0 2 pitch as it's off speed. Ah, it's down and away. Mourinho just stays on it. That front foot down nice and early and just try to slap it right back up the middle. Nice piece of hitting. Here's Joey Gallo, who had a nice game Tuesday night, the first game of this series, then did not play yesterday. Tuesday night had a couple of singles, an RBI, a walk. Had that two run homer on Sunday. I asked Aaron Boone if there was anything about you know, the last two games he played that kind of stood out, gives him confidence that maybe Gallo can string something along here. And he said, feels like he's a little quieter mm -hmm. at the plate. So there's less head movement. Well, quieter usually means shorter stride, where you're not getting out on your front foot. Exactly what Aaron Boone said that the stride length has been better. Feels like you can recognize pitches better that way also. Well, any hitter will tell you when the, when they turn things around usually it is the pitches that they get to hit they're not missing they're not fouling them off. That's been the case lately with Joey Gallo. When he gets some mistakes, he takes advantage of them. That misses, and it's three and one on Gallo with LeMahieu on deck. And when things turn around, there are borderline pitches that go your way. Just off the plate, it's a ball. This puts Joey Gallo right back in that driver's seat again. Three and one. Again, we talked about this with Donaldson. You can hunt a pitch, look for a pitch, look for a zone. If you get it, don't miss it. The 3 1. Chase to change up down, and the count is full. That's how Bundy has made a living at this level. We talked about the fastball velocity not overwhelming, so you got to throw some change ups and fastball counts. Gets a swing from Joey Gallo out of the strike zone. Trevino will be on the move. The 3 2. Gallo cranks that. High, deep, and gone! Tage! Joey Gallo's starting to lock it in. His seventh home run of the season, and it's 3-3. Three, three. Getting some pitches to hit and not missing them. Really the difference with Joey Gallo. 3-1 changeup out of the strike zone, swung right over the top, and then got a pitch to drive, 3-2. And, and the Yankees answer back with one swing of the bat from Joey Gallo. Out, around, and gone. Seventh home run of the year, and we got a ball game. Strike one to LeMahieu. What a swing from Gallo. And a big hit from Trevino as LeMahieu powers that into right. Kepler has room just in front of the track to make the catch. But it's a brand new ball game with Garrett Cole coming back out. And the score now tied. Experience a fully electric Audi vehicle at your local Tri-State Audi dealer today. A very early electric moments for the Minnesota Twins. Arai starts it off. Buxton gets a hanging slider, and then Carlos Correa, a fastball right down the middle of the plate. Those are your Audi electric moments. Just the seventh time in baseball history that a team has begun a game with back-to-back-to-back -back -back home runs. Never mind doing it against somebody like Garrett Cole. Most home runs Cole's ever allowed in a single inning, but new life for Cole after the two-run game-tying homer from Gallo. It was interesting too, John, because Trevino was in an 0-2 hole. It looked like Bundy was going to cruise through cruise the second. It, yeah. it was just a great piece of hitting from Trevino to set the stage for Gallo. Okay, we'll pay attention with Cole here and see if he can make any adjustments. That fastball command a little bit better right there to Urshela. 
Not quite locked in on the corner, but definitely further down and away. Here we go. These are the ones you'd be proud of, Ryan, as a starting pitcher. If you can find a way, make an adjustment, fix something out there in the middle of a ball game and try to get at least five or six innings. So funny, John, we were talking about this last night, and you were talking about Mike Mussina figuring it out on the mound and literally inventing pitches. Yeah, and, and it was obviously not a back to back to back home run situation but it was against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Chop to the left side Donaldson snares fires one down and Mike was he got off to a terrible start I think he gave up three runs early in that ball game and he I was catching him he called me out to the mound and said if you put down the hook em horn sign I'm going to throw a split finger fastball and I said Mike you don't have a split finger fastball <laughs> and he said I do tonight. And he ended up getting into the seventh inning of that ball game, inventing a pitch that he had never thrown before and finding a way and then kept us in the ball game. That's what the great ones have the ability to do. I would feel like those are the kind of starts too, where you really win the respect of your teammates. Well, I'm sure Cole is out on the mound now thinking, you know what, my guys just picked me up, right? That Joey Gallo just got me right back into this game. So now you got to return the favor, figure out a way. In addition to being quieter at the plate and the stride shortening, Gallo now playing right field as well, where he had been the last couple of seasons. Maybe there's some comfort there. Looks more comfortable out there, doesn't he? Yeah. Grounded up the middle, a base hit for Miranda, who had three hits last night. That's going to be a little frustrating right there. You keep Miranda on the ground. He finds a hole. Make a good pitch. And out over the plate. Fastball command's getting a little bit better here in the second. Here's Luisa Rise let off the game with his first career leadoff home run. Three and zero oh now on a rise. The Home Depot getting more done. Garrett Cole forcing fast. Well, this is what you've been talking about, John. Yeah, the first three it was a struggle. The last eight, he's just been dotting the fastball down and away to righties. Not able to here to a rise. Walks in and two on with one out for Minnesota. Buxton coming up. Buxton demolished a baseball into the third deck on the first pitch he saw from Cole.
One and all. Buckle curve. One and one. Yep, the little adjustments again. The knuckle curve maybe might be a bigger factor in this game than we have seen early this year from Cole. Buxton got it again. This time a three-run shot. Most home runs Cole has ever allowed in a game. It's 6 3 Twins. Well, we've seen the changeup end up in the seats, the slider and the fastball, and now the cutter. As Garrett Coles is trying to figure it out. Buxton has gotten a couple of mistakes. He's not missed them. The four home runs allowed tonight, career high. Well, we detail Buxton in the open, John, and just how talented he is, how we have seen it on display in this series, and we have certainly seen it tonight. And a very disappointing second inning for Garrett Cole after his team had rallied to tie it for him in the top of the inning. Well, the Twins organization just trying to figure out a way to keep Buxton out on the field and keep him healthy. D8's the first game, center field the last two. Boy, it is a struggle for Cole. He just can't he can't find that off speed pitch. He can land for a strike. Fastball's either missing middle of the plate or it's yanked off the plate. I wonder what Aaron Boone is thinking with his number one starter. Up the middle, another base hit. At some point you have to be thinking, I got maybe got to get somebody going here. Another look at the home run. It's a cutter. And we've seen a few of these cutters where Garrett Cole is working underneath and almost like dropping his arm a little bit. And when that happens, you don't get it out front. It doesn't move away from a righty. It just spins middle of the plate. A 6-3. Twins lead as Matt Blake comes out to chat with Garrett Cole again. I remember Aaron Boone has had to use a lot of his middle relief over the last two games. And there's a lot going on here, right? You have a number one starter. Do you want to give the opportunity to figure it out? There's the bullpen budget. Holmes hasn't worked in a while. You're not going to have Schmidt. Probably not Marinaccio. Probably not. You're not going to have Banuelos. Licky is going to probably be asked to do quite a bit here. But, you know, if you're Aaron Boone, that's, my point is you, you have your guy out there. You want to give him the opportunity to figure it out, right? Because yeah. you expect him to do that. But you also got to protect him a little bit. 53 pitches already. Not an easy place for a manager to be in. Twins awfully comfortable too with some of these swings. I mean, they're letting it fly.
Rocco Baldelli has to be thrilled with what his offense has done. Each game of this series against a Yankee rotation that was. Locked in. In a historic stretch. Over the last week plus. And the twins have shaken them right out of that. Could be two on to second for one back to first not in time. Fly ball into shallow left center. Hicks is there, inning over, but not before. Byron Buxton goes yard again. It's a 6-3 Twins lead after two. City Westchester in the Hudson Valley. Araldus Chapman is making some progress. He's going to throw a bullpen on Saturday. The Yankees will then take it from there. And Domingo Herman is set to begin a rehab assignment soon. Ryan, he threw a three-inning sim game the other day. And Aaron Boone was asked today whether or not he envisions him as a starter or a bullpen piece. And I don't think the decision has been made up on that yet. With the exception of the last couple days, we know how good the Yankees starting pitching has been. But I think about him coming out of the bullpen, what a weapon that would be for the Yankees. Yeah, especially and thank you Meredith especially John when you consider you know, some of the arms the Yankees have lost to injury in that bullpen judge smokes that to left field it will hang up for Warnick one down yeah I, I think Aaron Boone answered that question perfectly what Meredith is talking about we'll see where where we need him right yeah. at, that, at that point I mean right now you would say boy he'd be a nice piece out of that bullpen multiple innings but a lot could change by the time he's activated we've seen the Yankees make similar decisions with Michael King who is obviously a capable starter but they've loved so much in that role out of the pen and then even Clark Schmidt and the question of oh do you keep him stretched out triple A how do you handle him? no you like him for a relief role here at the major league level right now. And we saw how dominant Herman could be out of the pen. Rizzo singled his first time up. Yankee bullpen is quiet right now. Up the middle going to be a tough play on the backhand. Wow. That is a terrific play from Carlos Correa. You think about the defense on the left side for the Minnesota Twins. Obviously Correa playing the ship but the backhand and then the throw with plenty on it and right on the money. You're going to get a great look at it here. Made that play look a whole lot easier than it actually was. But you think about Urshela at third, Correa at short. Boy, that's a tough left side of the infield defensively. Correa won the Platinum Glove award last season. There's Donaldson, a sacrifice fly his first time up. See Correa make a play like that, John. It reminds me of you and I in Houston in 2015. Seeing Correa in person for the first time, his rookie season, and he had one inning where he made three plus plays. I think we both were like OK yeah we, we see it. Yeah and I think the, the physicality right out on the field we're like wow that's a big boy. Down yeah. There. yeah. The big man playing shortstop. That 
comes when you had the smallest sports coat I have ever seen worn by a human being that night. Really? Yeah. It was it was a stylish jacket that I had never seen. Did it like small like it didn't cover my wrist? No, or, no, or? no. It fits you beautifully. Oh, it just okay. was, wasn't as long as I'm used to seeing. Oh, OK, got you. Yeah, that's a style. That was. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's where I don't have. I don't have any style. So that, that's what I remember. <laughs> Slider in there for a strike. I'll have to see if I still have it. Break it out. A vintage broadcast. Torres on deck. Well, Donaldson goes down looking. He had a legitimate beef with that last one. But a 1 2 3 inning for Bundy. Cole will drop back to the mound with the Twins leading 6 3. Up and celebrate an all-time Yankees favorite, Andy Pettit. It's the rescheduled Andrew Eugene Pettit bobblehead night. And the first 18,000 guests in attendance will receive an Andy Pettit bobblehead courtesy of Delta Airlines. Tickets are going fast, so get your tickets today at yankees.com slash tickets. You sound way too excited reading that. I, because I know I've procured the bobbleheads. It's also two of my favorite things, Andy Pettit and Delta. Million miler over here. You get more excited about a Star Wars bobblehead or an Andy Pettit bobblehead. Wow. Now, can we make Andy a Jedi? Then I'll really have him made. You can do whatever you want, Ryan. <laughs> You're Ryan Rucco. You can do whatever you want. An idea for next May the 4th. Cole trying to settle down after an incredibly rough start to this game. Gave up three homers in the first and then a three run shot in the second. Most home runs he's ever allowed in a single game and it happened in just two innings. Sky high pop up. Torres. One down. Larnick, who is off to a solid start this season, has really improved his ability to hit off speed pitching. He really struggled with that last year. Currently, at least 80th percentile or better in. Average exit velocity, max exit velocity, and hard hit percentage. Struggled a bit since returning from a right groin strain that knocked him out for two weeks. But had a pinch hit RBI double last night. And he just absolutely demolished that. It's a derby for the Twins. Upper tank job and the fifth home run allowed tonight by Cole. Again, it's fastball right down the middle. You can see Garrett Cole's reaction. He knew he missed by about a half a plate with his location, and Larnick did not miss. Another long home run. And the reaction says it all from Garrett Cole. Wanted it to be away. It ended up middle in. It has been a grind.
Six home runs allowed in his previous 11 starts combined. Five allowed tonight for Cole. Licky back up and warming. Now you look up and down the Twins order, John, and I mean, there are a lot of really good, dangerous hitters on this team, and they've had one or another in and out of the lineup at different points. This is the first game of the series. We've seen Correa, Buxton, and Arise all together. It's a dangerous lineup. Yeah, we, we've talked a lot about the Yankee lineup and the diversity, different styles of hitters. But if you look at this lineup for the Twins, you have some speed, you have power, you got a good mix of lefty righties. Urshela shoots that into right center field. That will split the outfielders. And it is a one out double for Gio Urshela. And Ryan, to your point, when you have Gio Urshela hitting eighth in the lineup, and we know from his Yankee time, he has the ability to spray the ball all over the field, drive in runs, and Aaron Boone's got to make a move here. And he is just, it looks like waiting to make sure like he's ready, but that's going to be it for Garrett Cole. A historically rough night for the Yankee ace. He allows a career high five home runs and departs trailing 7 3. Of the Yankees. Tonight's photo was submitted by Willie, who recently took his granddaughter to her first ever Major League game and visited the Yankees Museum. He loves seeing that. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride and mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Well, Aaron Boone has had to deal with something he hasn't all year, and that's three straight tough starts from his rotation as Garrett Cole gets knocked around tonight and now Lucas Lickey on in relief in the third inning with the Yankees trailing 7-3 and Urshela at second just one out. John what would be your synopsis of the Cole outing tonight. Well, the numbers tell the whole story, right? I mean, eight hits, all the home runs, 70 pitches, and, you know, I just think that Mama said there are going to be nights like this. It's going to happen at some point, obviously, historically bad with the home runs. That's charged into left center. Judge makes the catcher. Shella went all the way to third. The throw to second. Not quite in time. Two down. Quite sure what Gio Urshela was thinking right there, but he gets away with it. Well, we witnessed firsthand his base running can be questionable at times. Should be hanging around halfway, and when it might have thought there were two outs, be able to get back to second base. But I, I guess Ryan, to summarize Garrett Cole, you try to get rid of this one, you look forward to the next one, figure out maybe what happened, and get right back on track. I think. Are they going to appeal here and say he did not retouch third base? I, I don't think Urshela retouched it. And that's what Licky is going to check on here with Donaldson. And he's out. There it is. It's a double play. You could see clearly on the replay that Urshela had not retouched third base. And a strange night in Minnesota just got a little stranger. Right here. Never retouches it. Good pickup by the Yankees. And the inning is over.
watching the call of out at third base on that Urshela mistake. So he touches third there. And then I don't see him ever retouch it, do you, John? It looks pretty clear cut, and you wonder why this challenge is taking so long. So Urshela and the third base coach, Tommy Watkins, still on the field. Jim Reynolds, crew chief. You can even read the lips there. You have to retouch the bag. It, it is odd, John, that this is taking this long. We had a situation the other night where Jim Reynolds was talking to New York, and he called back the runner from first base. So clearly they would made a decision, and then it just kept taking longer and longer. So you wonder why here. But a replay, Aaron Boone's frustrated. I mean, it looked pretty clear. Pretty clear. He's saying he's out. Let's go. Another look at it. Touches the bag. You have to retouch before you go back to second. Just don't see what the problem is here. After review, the call stands. The runner is out. Minnesota loses their challenge. The fact that they're saying stands instead of confirmed, I wonder if there was some debate as to whether Geo ever touched the bag initially, but it looked like he clearly did. Nonetheless, it's still a double play, and the bottom of the third is still over. Take a look at all the home runs. Buxton's going to be in there a couple of times. Correa gets a fastball right down the middle. Cutter that just spins for Buxton and then another fastball for Lumberdick. Reaction from Garrett Cole, a TikTok player to watch. Top of the fourth inning and Torres takes a strike. Audi scoreboard, twin seven, Yankees three. I mean, as you could tell, even just from seeing the swings, those homers weren't cheapies. I mean, every one of them was launched. A career high five homers allowed for Cole. It's the first start of his career in which he's allowed seven or more runs and thrown four innings or fewer. I wonder what that digestion of the start process will be like for Cole, because we know how studious he is in examining his outings and breaking them down. Torres, a base hit to center field. Well, I'm sure there's some self-evaluation on, on, was there a mechanical issue on why my command wasn't there? Mechanical issue also, the stuff wasn't great. So you go through it in your mind and I'm sure he'll go to the video to get an idea and then biggest trick Ryan is turning the page and looking forward to the next one right yeah. okay to get that out of my system it happened it's over now let's fix it and look forward to my next start for the Yankees a comeback still on the table here with a lot of game left. We detailed in the pitcher scanner report Dylan Bundy over his last six, six starts and ERA over eight. So we've seen some good swings. He has the highest ERA in the American League. And his numbers in his career against the Yankees are rough. Two and six with a 6 4 2 ERA against the Yankees all time. 
Hicks with one career home run off of Bundy. Hicks. It's that high in the air to right. Just got under it a bit on the edge of the track. Kepler makes the catch. One down. Well, a hitter will tell you everything you need to know. And you watch Aaron Hicks put that head down. He knows he had a pitch to drive, and he just missed it. Still sitting on one home run. Here's IKF. Oh, and one. Torres looked like he started and stopped, and then so did IKF with his swing. Stats with lows, the numbers on Bundy in his career against the Yankees. Just two quality starts of the 12. IKF smoked it to center, but right at Buxton. Two away. Good swings already this inning, though, from the Yankees. Trevino had a two-out single on an 0-2 pitch. That set the stage for Joey Gallo's game-tying homer in the second. Warming in the Twins pen. You know, Ryan, I, I watched Trevino play, and, and he's got to be going through one of those times where he's like, I just got traded from the Texas Rangers to one of the best teams in baseball, and I'm almost hitting 300. Yeah. I'm catching a staff that's been amazing, and I guess my point is as a player, you're in a situation and then you get traded to this situation and you take advantage of the opportunity that has been given to you. You're going to look back on this later on when your playing career is over and say you know what that year with the Yankees that was the best baseball I played and the most fun I had had. We'll see how it all turns out but definitely has made a very positive impression. Fly ball down the right field line and a long run. Kepler gets there, inning over. We go to the bottom of the fourth, Twins a 7-3 lead. Sports book. Let's see minus 106. 0 to 15, U15 minus 120, odd subject to change. Right now, new customers get $200 in free bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app now and start making every moment more. All right, the over under at 15. It sounds like they feel like there's still going to be some runs in this game. Audi scoreboard, Minnesota 7 and the Yankees 3. Strike one to arise. You can tell how much betting I do with the way I read that graph. I didn't know if you wanted me to needle you on it or not. So I'm very proud of you. Not a not a betting man. You 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 read it like you were just like designating a a youth baseball league, the U15. Nice sliding catch made by Hicks. One down. 
thought Aaron Hicks was very honest with Meredith too when she asked about playing left field and he said you know it's getting better still not 100 percent comfortable he looked comfortable there a really good jump and a sliding catch. I talked to him about it for a little bit yesterday John and he was saying it, it, it's getting used to the restriction you know, in center field feel like you can roam everywhere and there's no real out of bounds so to speak is the way he was describing whereas in left at some point you're sort of seeding to your center fielder and there has been some communication issues with Aaron Judge in center. Lucas Litke in this situation here in the fourth inning just trying to settle some things down. You can throw up a zero. But the Yankees go to work offensively. Two and one. Buxton, two for two, two home runs. A solo shot in the first, a three run shot in the second. He has tormented Yankee pitching in this series. Broken bat, Looper, LeMayhew, two down. Strike one on Correa. In the first year of a three year hundred and five million dollar deal with an opt out after each season. But has loved his time in Minnesota thus far. You know what, John, for a team that has had just remarkable postseason failure for a long time, he feels like the perfect free agent acquisition. He has an unbridled confidence. He's had playoff success. Maybe he'll bring the attitude they need at that time of year. Well I do agree with the attitude and the postseason success but he also had some pretty good starting staffs when he was playing in Houston That's a good point which helps. That's the thing that the Minnesota Twins will see if they can get better get healthier out on the mound. Yeah Correa works a walk. The best deal in mobile. Get unlimited for only $29.99. Visit SpectrumMobile.com. Polanco flips around to the right side. Strike one. We talk about that streak of playoff struggle for Minnesota. They've lost 18 straight playoff games since 2004. It's the longest postseason losing streak all time, not just in the majors. But also if you include the NFL the NBA and the NHL. Hmm.
two and one on Polanco. Polanco pretty much the same average from both sides of the plate showing some more power from the left side. And it's three and one. Correa leads off of first. Two down in this bottom of the fourth. The Twins a 7 3 lead. Cole chased in the third inning after surrendering five home runs. And the count is full. field Correa will head to third Hicks gets it into second a hard hit single for Polanco and runners at the corners with two down for Minnesota well, Licky with two quick outs the walk of Correa now the base hit from Polanco twins trying to add on here with two outs Blake is going to go out and chat with Lucas Litke. Big spot in this game with the Yankees already down 7 3. Rubber game of this three game set. Sonny Gray. Hanging out, watching the action with Byron Buxton. Right, currently on the I.L. with a peck strain. One oh to Kepler. Kepler loops that into shallow center. I.K.F. makes the catch. Very nice play from the Yankees shortstop to end the inning. Over the shoulder. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder Bob. <laughs> we'll hear more from Bob and Jack throughout the night. Ryan Rugo, John Flaherty, Mirth Morakovich with you. Top of the fifth. Joey Gallo cuts and misses chasing up. 0 and 1 Gallo a two run homer. His first time up. Tied the game at three after Cole had given up. 
back to back to back home runs in the first. But it didn't get better after that for Garrett Cole and the Yankees trying to dig themselves out of a whole exit velocity presented by Spectrum Mobile. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. 99.5 miles an hour, 380 feet. Gallo tomahawks that deep into the night. My goodness, what a blast from Joey Gallo. Second home run of the evening for Gallo. Well, this is just what the Yankees have been waiting for from Joey Gallo. Fastball for the home run in the second inning, a two run shot, and a changeup on an 0 2 count that Gallo just unloads on. That'll do it for Dylan Bundy. Gallo gets the Yankees a bit closer. 7 4 game. Cotton coming in. Sandy Alcantara, six straight starts with at least seven innings pitched and one earned run or fewer allowed. Miami has some talented young arms. Jordan Alvarez, a 500 average and five home runs in his last 10 games. And Ian Happ, who the Yankees are going to see at the stadium this weekend, batting 379 over his last eight games. That should be fun. The Cubs coming into Yankee Stadium, two historic franchises. Joey Gallo. 15th, 15th career multi home run game. First of the season. Aaron Boone talked before the game about quieting down at the plate, shortening the stride, liking what he's seen, and well, the results have been there for Gallo over the last few games, especially tonight as Jarrell Cotton will face the top of the Yankee order. Nobody out here in the fifth. Rocco Baldelli not wasting much time with Dylan Bundy getting Cotton back in the game here. He's been up and down Triple A a bunch this year. Pitch for Texas last season. And the Yankees have found ways to win games this year in a lot of different fashion. You get some solid middle relief in this game. They're going to be right there at the end with their lineup. Just kind of feels like it could be that kind of game, right, John? These are the type of games, Ryan. It's all about, like I said, the middle reliever who comes in and settles everything down. Throw up a couple of scoreless innings. It gives your lineup a chance to regroup, get back in it. Licky's done that so far. As Cotton doesn't get the call. Sanchez behind the plate couldn't believe it. Cotton returned to the majors last July for his first big league game since September of 2017. Went over 1,400 days. LeMahieu charges that into left center. Buxton back. Looking up, it is gone. The 100th career home run for DJ LeMahieu. And the Yankee comeback gaining steam. It's a 7 5 game. A little celebration from DJ LeMayu. A little clap as he reads home plate. And why not? 100 career home runs in the major leagues. We'll take another look at the swing. Look like another changeup. This one just sits there, middle of the plate. So Cotton, who made a good pitch, the pitch before didn't get the call, then has to come over the plate. LeMayu makes him pay. Brand new ball game. Gallo and LeMayu go back to back. And that short little stride driving off the back leg and working underneath it gets good backspin. Judge skies one into shallow right. Kepler puts it away for the first out. 100 career home runs for DJ LeMayu just a couple of days after 1500 career hits. Talked about the century mark approaching after he was asked about his 1500th career hit the other day and 
he said, no, it's a, you know, DJ, he's very subdued. He said, it's a cool number, definitely cool, but probably something I won't appreciate until I'm done playing. A oh, hat went astray. Rizzo flies it into left. Larnick, two down. Really been eight home runs in this game. Here's Josh Donaldson. But may you the 57th player to hit number 100 as a Yankee the last Aaron Judge in Seattle back in August of 2019. See the shift for Donaldson. Well, hitters are always exchanging information in that dugout. LeMayu hitting that changeup for a home run. I'm sure he's spreading the word around. The changeup, it looks like, from Cotton is going to be his best weapon. Two and two. Got a little chirping going on with the home plate umpire. Yankees not happy with the strike zone from John Lipka. Hey, knock it off, all right? I heard you. Looked like a good pitch there. And Lipka took off the mask, turned to the Yankee dugout, and as you just heard, said, knock it off, I heard you. And Donaldson goes down swinging. But not before the Yankees go back to back. Gallo's second of the night. And boy, did it go deep into the night. LeMayu's 100th of his career. It's a brand new ball game. 7 5 Twins. Only one thing it's time for trivia. Three pitchers have 15 plus career wins with both the Yankees and Minnesota Twins. Who are they? I know one right out of the gate. Me too. Okay. So we got that. Yeah, we got that, that going out. for us. Yeah. Good. Is the one, I mean, I'm thinking we're thinking the same one. Recent. Did I catch him? No. No, then we're thinking somebody Ooh, different. Okay. All right. Good. Then we have two of them covered. Gil Castro warming in the Yankee pen. Smith warming in the Twins pen. Sanchez 0 for 2 tonight. 2 and 2. Uh, Lucas Lickie always likes to run that cutter slider in on the hands of righties. Left that one out over the plate just a bit. John, you talked about it. If you're going to have a comeback, you need that middle reliever to step up. So far, Lickie has. Lickie has, and you're also thinking that the Yankees put two on the board and love to throw another shutdown inning here in the bottom of the fifth. Completely changed the momentum of this game. In case you're just joining us, Garrett Cole really struggled. First time in his career, he's allowed seven or more runs while going fewer than four innings. Gave up a career high five home runs. Minnesota started this game with back to back to back dingers. 
Chop to the left side. Donaldson. One down. Larnick hit a massive home run his last time, Bob. Four hundred and forty one feet to right field. And there's a look back in the third inning and it's a reaction of Cole that tells you everything you need to know is that fastball missed by a whole plate it's supposed to be away ended up middle in. You know, this time of year, you think of Larnick in college, Oregon State. They were down 1 0 in the best of three College World Series finals against Arkansas. Game two was tied in the top of the ninth, and Larnick hit a game winning two run homer, and then Oregon State went on to win College World Series the next night. As Larnick grounds out to LeMahieu. And that. He's going to do it for Lucas Lickey. If the Yankees come back and win, he just may have a belt in his locker afterwards. Lickey will give way to Castro. Two out, bottom of the fifth. Yankees down just two. Plus career wins with both the Yankees and Minnesota Twins. Who are they? Phil Hughes was mine. Did Carl Pavano win 15 as a Yankee? I don't I'm know not if he sure. did. I don't know. That was the guy you caught. Any other guesses? Pineda. Pineda, Hughes, and Ron Davis. So Carl Pavano did not win 15 games as a New York Yankee. He won nine. Wow. Wow is right. Oh, Lucas Lickey and his mustache. Nice outing tonight. So he helps steady this game for the Yankees. And now Miguel Castro looks to take the baton and run. You know, Phil still watches a lot of Yankee baseball. Although tonight, I'm guessing he's locked Watching into a hockey. hockey game. Yeah. Yep. It's a diehard Lightning fan. Phil actually asked a question on Twitter last night, John, that a lot of people have asked over the first two games. They've said, what is that stuff flying around in the outfield? I don't think we've seen as much of it tonight, but I'm not sure if it was pollen or cottonwood. I think it was cottonwood. Not as pronounced as the last couple of nights, but there's your answer, Phil. A little cottonwood. One and two on Urshela. A 94 mile an hour changeup. Swing and a miss. Slider got Urshela. And the Yankee bats ready to go back to work. Down just two. Headed to the sixth. Between the Yankees and the Cubs tomorrow night is exclusively on Prime Video. Coverage starts at 6.30 with the pregame. Hosted by Meredith Morakovitz. And first pitch scheduled for 7.05. Then after the final out, turn to yes. Post game coverage and clubhouse reaction.
John Meredith and I will have you covered for the post game tomorrow. New pitcher for Minnesota is Joe Smith. Strong numbers on the season. Leads all active pitchers in appearances. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time, Ryan, and he does it with that sidearm delivery, a lot of sinker slider combinations. On a few your scoreboard, 7 5, Twins lead it. Torres first pitch swinging, first pitch popping. Nobody went and got it, and Torres reaches. Wow, Correa and Polanco both just assumed the other had it, and Glaber Torres is on with a single. Something strange in the air tonight. Well, the ball goes up right away and Polanco started making his way back to the second base position. Correa just assuming that he had it. Obviously there was no communication. See Polanco's like all right Correa's got this no big deal and Correa's thinking Polanco has this no big deal and Yankees catch a break. John you know what's so funny is as I'm watching that pop up I was thinking wait neither of them is getting underneath it. and then I thought maybe I'm just reading it wrong. No, they both thought the other one had it. Just open the door in this sixth inning. There's always that conversation of giving good teams an extra out. That's a gift. Let's see what Hicks and the Yankees do with it. I don't think we'll ever watch Aaron Hicks in Minnesota without thinking of that wild 14 12 game in 2019 his game tying homer and then his game ceiling catch. And it's three and one on Hicks. Said he went. Wow. Okay. Two and two. Well, take a look from the side. Ooh. I don't know if that bat head came around. We'll take a look from up top. Big difference. Two and two versus three and one. Hicks launches that down the right field line. This game is tied. Aaron Hicks with a little more Minnesota magic. And it's 7 7. Well, the lack of communication between Correa and Polanco was a gift as Glaber Torres was on base, and Aaron Hicks made them pay. Only his second home run of the year, but it's a big one as Smith tries to run that slider in on his hands. Aaron Hicks beats him to the spot and is able to keep it fair. Another look at the path of the swing right out towards the pitcher. Great extension. What a beautiful look at that. The only question was fair or foul, and it ended up fair by a lot. Yeah, that couple, they enjoyed it. A lot of smiles in that Yankee dugout. I'm sure Garrett Cole in the clubhouse enjoying the fact that the Yankees come all the way back to tie this one up. First home run since April 12th against the Blue Jays. And he 
give Lucas Litke some credit for for holding it right where it is. Give the Yankee lineup a chance. John we talked about it an inning ago just has the feel of a comeback type game and the Yankees have evened it up at seven. A lot of real estate left as IKF works the walk. Nine home runs in this game already. Brian, isn't it funny how a hitter's reaction is going to tell you everything you need to know about the flight of a baseball? You think of Aaron Hicks in that fourth inning when he just missed one out to right field, put his head down, was frustrated, and then you look back at that last swing and the reaction right away. As he knows, not only it has the distance, but he was able to keep this fair. The hitter will tell you exactly what the outcome is going to be. Half at first, nobody out. And that's balk. a balk. Jim Reynolds all over it. Greatest defensive half inning for the Minnesota Twins. Yeah. Lack of communications on a pop up to the infield. Now the balk. Kind of for Leffa in scoring position. That was a tough assignment here for Trevino. The, the right hander who drops down running the ball in on his hands. Situational hitting would love to hit a ground ball to the right side move IKF to third. IKF is taken off the throw down. Not in time. Quite the gamble there from Kiner Falefa but he is in at third. With a stolen base. Well, Joe Smith with that delivery is going to take a little bit of time, and Falefa gets a great jump. Take a look. Urshela comes up with the ball. The tag looked mm. like he's out as long as he held on to it, oh, which I it. don't think he did. Yep, ball yep. comes loose. You're right. So Kiner Falefa safe. Trevino battling. Ryan that's the perfect word for this at bat right now <laughs> is battling. This is not easy for a right handed hitter Joe Smith dropping down. The slider is going to move away the two seamers going to run in on your hands. Chop to first anchoring at third is IKF and the battle won by Smith. Well, Joey Gallo got it going in the second inning. A fastball up out over the plate, more of a line drive home run. And then in the fifth, the changeup on an 0-2 count that's up middle. And this is a blast. Majestic home run from Gallo. Strike one. You would love another one, but obviously you don't need one here if you're Joey Gallo. Aaron Boone has been talking about the stride is shorter the head is more still putting balls in play 
got to pick up this run from third less than two outs. And you think about the beleaguered outfielders Hicks and Gallo the struggles they've started this season with and both have come through in a massive way thus far tonight in this comeback effort. Gallo fouls are right back here. John was ready but won't have a play. One two. Gallo fouls it right back here and just underneath you John. That one got my attention. I thought it was coming back here with a little more steam. Yeah. The other one was mild flirtation. This was aggressive. Another one two. Does not come back to catch the corner. Two and two. Gallo with his 15th career multi home run game tonight. He has never hit three homers in a game. Fieldbar, who's pitched in the first two games of this series, warming, along with Duran. Big hole on the left side of the infield. Three infielders on the right side playing in for Minnesota. The 2 2. Gallo chases and strikes out. Two down. Well, it's a huge strikeout for Smith, and Gallo just goes up out of the strike zone. You can see the frustration. It's an easier at bat for a lefty than a righty, but Gallo gets caught chasing. Now it'll be left to DJ LeMayu, a tough assignment with two outs here. LeMayu is 100th career home run last time up. We're going to pick up Trevino and Gallo here in this sixth. Right back to the mound. Smith gets out of it without further damage. But the Yankees tie the score on this swing. Aaron Hicks goes yard. 7 7. Going to the bottom of the sixth. The T Mobile coverage cam. Look at that moon. Beautiful. On a gorgeous night. Game has been played like it's a full moon. Strange things occurring. Montefiore scoreboard. Yankees seven, Twins seven. Miranda fights that off into shallow center. Judge one down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Garrett Cole started this game, struggled, gave up back to back to back home runs, beginning with a rise to begin the game. The Yankees tied it in the second on a two run homer from Joey Gallo. Then Buxton hit a three run shot off Cole in the bottom of the second. Larnick added a solo shot in the third. And one batter later, Cole was done, having allowed a career high five home runs. But Lucas Lickey came in, settled things down, beginning with a fly out to center in which Gio Urshela 
tag third never retouched on his way back to second turned into a double play and that was one of a couple blunders from the twins tonight that have helped aid a Yankee comeback a second homer from Gallo and then that two run shot from Hicks in the top of the sixth to tie it at seven lined into left center Hicks over and two down. StatCast 3D presented by Google Cloud. How about nine home runs tonight, John? Well, StatCast is busy here tonight <laughs> in Minnesota. And as you mentioned earlier, not, not any cheapies. Not at all. Buxton has two home runs, four RBI. Gallo also with two. Well, I'm sure he's thinking about that at bat in the top of the six with IKF at third and one down. Might also be thinking about having something in his eye. I need assistance with that. <laughs> Ball four, Buxton works a two out walk. This is not a battle Gallo has won yet. Correa's had a big night. A homer, a single, a walk. And Castro checks on Buxton who has plenty of speed over there at first plenty of speed but he's only has one stolen base you wonder maybe if the twins telling him to kind of calm it down save those legs a little bit oh, with the injury history let's say the other part of a Carlos Correa hitting behind him in the lineup obviously has a lot of power only four home runs so far. Buxton stole 29 bases back in 2017. There he goes. Grounded to short. IKF. Ends the inning. Nicely done for Miguel Castro. We go to the seventh. Tied at seven. Foam Green traveled to Indiana to face off with the fever. Coverage starts at 7 o'clock on Yes and streaming live on the Yes app. He went over Minnesota Tuesday. Sabrina Ganescu had a big game. Duran is in for Minnesota. He has filthy stuff, as you may have imagined, from the 36 strikeouts to four walks. Yeah, he leads Twins relievers in the strikeout category with 36, and that batting average against not too shabby, 161. I guess this is his lane, right, Brian? Yeah. Take care of Judge Rizzo and Donaldson. Cadillac scoreboard Yankees seven twin seven. 
Yohan Duran will face Judge, Rizzo, and Donaldson. Hundred and one miles an hour, and he can get it up there even higher than that. Judge gets that in the air to deep left center field. Larnick back, so is Buxton. It's off the top of the wall. A leadoff double for Aaron Judge. Well, when you face velocity at 101 miles an hour, you have to be geared up to take care of it. But this is an off speed pitch that just sits middle of the plate. And what that does when you're looking for fastball velocity, it speeds up your bat right off the top of the wall for Aaron Judge. Lead off double and that close to a go ahead home run. Wow. <laughs> I mean, can't get much closer than that. Rizzo takes a big rip, fouls it back 101 miles an hour. Again, you'd love the way the Yankees hit the ball into the seats, the home run ball leading all of Major League Baseball. But there comes a time where situational hitting is just as important in this situation here. Getting Aaron Judge to third base, give Donaldson an opportunity to drive him in afterwards is important for Rizzo. Get the bat head out, pull this ball. Just missed with 100 off the outside corner. One and one. It's easy for me to say sitting up here, right? Get the bat head out on 100, 101 miles an hour, but that's got to be the game plan for Rizzo. Pull the ball, get judged to third. If it's a base hit, great. If you get it up in the air, even better. Rizzo pokes it the other way. A base hit. Judge rounding third, heading home. Rizzo in his second, he's out. But it's a go-ahead RBI single from Anthony Rizzo, and the Yankees have retaken the lead. It's 8-7. Well, Rizzo doesn't pull this baseball, but he takes a two-seamer out over the plate, off the plate, and drives it the other way. Larnick with a good throwing arm in left field, but Aaron Judge, the head-first slide, and then Sanchez picking up Rizzo at second base with the damage already done. Nice piece of hitting going the other way. Aaron Judge with the head first slide. And the Yankees with the lead. First lead for the Yankees since it was a 1 0 game. Trail 3 1, tied it at 3. Trailed 7 3, tied it at 7, and now have taken an 8 7 lead. Donaldson pokes one into right field. Really good swings against one of the best twins reliever, Duran. Like a changeup, maybe? Donaldson just stays inside with the knob of the bat. The bat barrel follows. Good high finish. Torres, two hits already tonight. You and I were admiring the power display Glaber was putting on during BP today. One and one. 
Wandy Peralta getting ready in the Yankee pen. The Yankees should have King and Holmes. You would think with the lead that the seventh might be an inning for King. Yeah, you're thinking right along with me as I see Peralta out there getting loose. Yankees have a one run lead. You start thinking about the back end relievers, King and Holmes. Donaldson goes. He gets away from Sanchez. And Donaldson had that base stolen regardless. So runner at second with one out. First stolen base of the year for Donaldson and we'll take a look at Glaber. Did he go? They said he did not. The ball gets away from Sanchez. What a jump. The two one. Misses three and one on. Torres with Aaron Hicks on deck. Moran getting loose. Not the swing you want on three and one. Count is full. Well, sometimes you sell out for the fastball and the velocity, and you get the curveball. It's going to be an awkward swing. Three two Torres grounds it to the left side Polanco over throws it away and Torres is safe Donaldson to third and we'll see if Glaber's all right Arise is going to tag Torres but the only reason he went left is to avoid the collision and now we'll see if Glaber's okay and Arise is shaken up as well. This has been a shaky game defensively for the Minnesota Twins. Looks like a rise is hurt. Looks like Glaber is going to be all OK. Manager Rocco Baldelli is going to go out and have a talk with Jim Reynolds, the first base umpire. As you see, Polanco comes up with it, the throw way off the mark. Great play by a rise just to get a glove on it. They get tangled up. You have had a bevy of blunders from the Twins tonight. Urshela not retouching third on the fly ball to center. Correa and Polanco inexplicably just letting an infield pop up drop between them without either making an effort for the baseball right before Hicks's two run homer. And now this throw from Polanco. All right, John, that is a heck of a, a play from a rise. Play. Saving a run. Glaber appears okay. A rise stays in as well. And Hicks will hit with first and third, one out. Yankees leading 8 7. One run already in this inning against Duran. Well, the sixth inning for Aaron Hicks. That slider middle down and in. And the reaction tells you everything you need to know. Torres was leaning towards second. Duran checks on him.
Donaldson at third, Torres at first. And another check on Torres. We mentioned it the first game of the series, but Minnesota has been historically bad throwing out base runners to begin this season. Opposing teams stealing bases at a 91% clip entering this series. Hicks finds a hole. Nice piece of hitting from Aaron Hicks and the Yankees lead this 9-7. Well, we showed you the power of Aaron Hicks, his two-run home run, and now the ability just to stay on an off-speed pitch or two-seamer out over the plate and slap it the other way. Another base hit, another RBI. These relentless Yankees Putting it on Duran here in the seventh. 9 7, Bombers lead. Streaming now on the Yes app. Watch as celebrity guests like Garrett Cole, Charles Oakley, Henrik Lundquist, and more join Chef Marcus Samuelson to explore the city's diverse culinary scene. Stream episodes exclusively on the Yes app. Fun show, definitely check it out. Well, the Polanco error looms large in this inning as the Yankees have already pushed two more across, taking a 9 7 lead. It has been an impressive comeback thus far from the Yanks. Giovanni Moran. The new pitcher for Minnesota. And he will face IKF. IKF, the only Yankee starter without a hit thus far. First game of this series was the first time this year every Yankee starter had a hit. And now they're one IKF hit away from doing it again. IKF rolls it slowly to shore. Correa trying to turn it and just have the force at second. Two away. Runners in the corners now. Interesting move here. Trevino back to the dugout. Hmm. John Carlos Stanton sighting, maybe? Yeah. This is interesting, right? With a two run lead in the seventh inning. Aaron Boone taking his shot with Stanton against the lefty Moran. Numbers in Stan's career as a pinch hitter are not great. Three for 34. First and second, two out. We see that sometimes, John, with guys who play regularly. It's a tough adjustment. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do. But Aaron Boone sending Stanton out there, a guy who's beat up on left-handed pitching in his career. And 
He's ahead 2 and 0. Oh. You'd expect Moran to pitch carefully to stand the head in the count two and zero. Oh. You have second base open and the lefty hitting Gallo on deck. Stan chases the change two and one. And it's three and one on Stan. John, you'd think he'd be very careful with this three one. Yeah, pitch. you'd expect to see that change up again. Would not expect him to challenge Stan with that fastball. A three one. There was the change up. It's down. Ball four. Bases loaded for Joey Gallo. They run Higashioka now for a stand. Yeah, there they you will. go. So Gallo. Already with two homers tonight. Big smile from John Carlos Stanton. A five pitch night. Works the walk. Gallo bats. Bases loaded. Two down. Two runs already in. Ball one. Outside, 2 and 0. Gallo in the driver's seat. A 2 0. Big swing, just missed it. And the difference that numbers are getting better for Gallo because he's not fouling off these pitches. He did right there. Good swing. The 2 1. Another one. Okay, that was 95 right down the middle, and Gallo just missed it. Base is loaded, two out to 2-2. Two -two. Ball three, full count. Going to be able to start the merry-go-round on the release from Moran. Torres at third, IKF at second, and Higashioka pinch running at first. A 3-2, swing and a miss. Got him. Big strikeout from Moran to prevent further damage. But the Yankees take the lead with two in the seventh. A 9 7 Yankee advantage. Cadillac game summary, which Jack was just talking about. Hicks and Gallo, four for eight, three homers, six RBIs. Twins hit back to back to back home runs to lead off the game. Just the seventh time in Major League history that has happened. And the nine home runs combined, second most in a game in the majors this season. Sort of interesting here, John, with a 9-7 lead. Bottom of the seven, there have been many times where we've seen Michael King go multiple innings, but it's Wandy Peralta who gets the call here in the seventh. Well, he's going to face Polanco, Kepler, and Gary Sanchez. Obviously, Polanco, a switch hitter, Kepler, 
from the left side. Gary from the right side. Larnick would hit fourth. He's a lefty. He got Shioka in behind the plate now. Rubber game of this three game series. Yankees took the opener. 10 4, Twins. 8 1 last night. John, we talked about that number out. You know, last night was the first time this season the Yankees had lost a game by six or more runs. First time they'd even trailed a game by six or more runs. It's the fourth deepest they've ever gotten into a season before that happened. And the other three times where they actually got deeper, 1927, 1939, 1942, all championship teams and historically great championship teams. Well, when we talk about the Yankee season and, and the common theme is finding different ways to win ball games. The change up from Peralta and at the beginning of the year the bullpen was such a strength as Michael King getting his gun hot Then all of a sudden the rotation takes over when the injuries were in the bullpen and it wasn't exposed right now all of a sudden you got three games where the starters have struggled and the bullpen in this game has been fantastic and Peralta continues it as Polanco goes down swinging Licky settling things down Castro took over now Peralta Michael King getting loose mentioned in our key of keys to the game would be good to get Clay Holmes some work he hasn't worked in four days one of the things that Aaron Boone talked about after that first game John where the Yankees didn't get a great start and were sloppy said hey found another way to another win a way game. To win. And this game obviously would fall in that category if the Yankees can record these final eight outs. It is three and one. Sanchez on deck. Rolled into the shift. Torres, two down. Sanchez 0 for 3 tonight. He and Kepler are the only twins that have not been on base yet this evening. Like a quick pitch. Sanchez peeked his head up and the ball was on its way. Oh, 
If anybody knows Peralta, it's Gary Sanchez. They've worked together. You can see Sanchez in the box, ready to go, not going to get quick pitched. Chases two and two. Shattered bat, fair ball, awkward hop, inning over. Wandy Peralta works a one, two, three, seven. This game goes to the eighth with the Yankees leading nine, seven. Eight live. Now on the Yes app, place actions for free, earn coins, and climb the leaderboard for a chance to win prizes after the third, sixth, and ninth inning. Play Yes, pick and play live now. Aaron Hicks has had a lot of reasons to smile tonight. Hyundai scoreboard, Yankees nine, twins seven. Hicks three ribbies, a two-run homer that tied the game. Here's LeMayhew, who hit his 100th career home run back in the fifth, part of the comeback effort after Garrett Cole struggled tonight. Cole gave up a career-high five home runs. Yankees trailed 7-3. But Gallo and LeMay went back to back in the fifth. Hicks a two run shot in the sixth, and the Yankees added two more runs in the seventh. Gets the call one and one. LeMay, another base hit. This lineup is relentless. DJ LeMayu wearing out the right side of the field. You mentioned his 100th home run of his career earlier. This is that classic inside out line drive to right field approach from LeMayu. 290th multi hit game over the last seven seasons, most in the majors. Oh, and one on Judge. Talked about Judge and that batting average over 300. Big slugger, but also a real good disciplined hitter. Expanded out of the strike zone that first pitch. And this could be two. Polanco just gets to the bag. Double play. Polanco going to be able to beat LeMayu to the bag, throw on the run. Get Aaron Judge by a couple of steps. Rizzo, a couple of hits tonight, including an RBI single the other way to give the Yankees the lead in the seventh. Yankees will hop right on a plane, head home tonight, and take on the Cubs at the stadium tomorrow. Michael King getting ready to go.
And Rizzo works the walk. Third time he's been on base tonight. Donaldson, a sack fly tonight, a single, a run scored. Big hole on the right side for Donaldson. Donaldson has heard some boos throughout the series from the Twins fans. Spent two seasons here. Rips that one into left center field. Rizzo will turn and go to third. Is there a chance he could score? No. He's going to hang on at third, but it's a double for Josh Donaldson. And the Yankees with a little two-out noise here in the eighth. Well, that two out hitting to extend innings. As Donaldson gets on top of this and drills it to left center field. Where Rizzo coming around second is thinking the possibility maybe of scoring, but Buxton gets it up quickly. Right into Correa. Here's Torres with second and third, two out. Two hits already tonight for Glaber. Good changeup from Moran, 0 and 1. Torres has put the voodoo spell on the Twins tonight. It was his pop-up that Correa and Polanco just didn't even move for, let land between them right before Hicks's game-tying home run. And then the next inning, Torres reached on an error on a poor Polanco throw, helped lead to some in to an insurance run that inning. StatCast 3D presented by Google Cloud. The probability of that pop up hit probability 0%. Launch angle of 66 degrees. <laughs> right, John, that's the thing. It wasn't one of those pop ups where it's up there for a while and you. Fighting the wind a little bit or competing with the mound or it looks to, I mean it was just Polanco went to the bag Correa didn't realize it and it just landed. No timeout call. And it's three and two on Torres with Hicks waiting on deck. Yeah. 
Second and third, two out, and time called again. Labor wasn't quite ready. Now he is. The payoff. Ball four. Torres works a walk. And the bases are loaded now for Aaron Hicks. Hicks has had a huge night, a game-tying two-run homer in the sixth, and an RBI single in the seventh. He has started to really come around over the last week. Heard him tell Meredith Morakovic before the game about just seeing the ball better. Turn to the right side. That one skips away from Sanchez. Rizzo delayed at first, now will score. And the Yankee lead is 10-7. Well, the Yankees have gotten some gifts from the defense of the Twins tonight. Sanchez on the one knee, change up down and away, can't get his chest in front of it. And you're right, Rizzo kind of hesitated, looking for the bounce off of the wall. Worried that it might come straight back. It actually goes up the line a little bit, enabling Rizzo to score. And Donaldson had already gone to third, so Rizzo was almost without a choice. I'm watching Aaron Hicks now that he's moved over to the right side, way off the plate. And here's another look at it as Donaldson is on the move. Rizzo hesitates. Eventually, he's going to score. Aaron Hicks way off the plate. Moving over to the right side. Hicks to towering fly ball. Into left. Larnick with room in front of the track to make the catch and end the inning. But the Yankees had one more. Hicks thought he had it. 10 7 Yanks to the bottom of the eighth. analysis and complete player reaction from tonight's series finale against the Twins plus Aaron Boone on the manager's report that's all coming up at the WB Mason Yankees postgame Ryan Rucco John Flaherty Meredith Morakovic with you our producer Troy Benjamin director Michael Cooney Luke Miller on tape Samantha Hickey on graphics appreciate you hanging out with us Michael King the new pitcher for the Yankees Bottom of the eighth inning. The Yankees looking to complete a very impressive comeback tonight in Minnesota. Hyundai scoreboard. Yankees a 10 7 lead. I think Jack Curry and the cut in said it perfectly, John. You don't expect to win games where your starter gives up five home runs. Yeah, the Yankees six outs away from taking this one home, flying back to New York, and the way it started out. Didn't look great, but this team has shown a lot of different ways to win. Ten runs, an impressive bullpen at efforts. Started with Licky, continued with Castro, then Peralta in the seventh, and now Michael King here in the eighth. King starting to get it back on track. Each of his last two appearances have been perfect. Went through a little bit of a struggle, but looks like he's regained his form. He had a seven game stretch where he had a 7 1 5 ERA. The O2. He 
Larnick, Urshela, and Miranda. Swing and a miss. One down. Well, he has that delivery, throws across his body a little bit. It's a two seamer that's going to have some movement, but perfect location down and away. Yeah, good start for Michael King. John, we should give congratulations to Oklahoma, the Women's College World Series champs tonight, closed out their series in two games. Defeating Texas, back to back championships for Oklahoma. Six national titles. Two and one on Urshela. Urshela one for three, doubled, came into this game hitting 379 over his last 16 games. Nasty two and two. Cano. Warming for Minnesota. And it is full on Urshela as King misses with 99. Strike three. Urshela down looking. A little hesitation at first, but John Lipka said, yeah, that is strike three. Yeah, and Urshela knew it too, that it was probably a good pitch, but there was a little hesitation from home plate umpire John Lipka. Looks like he catches that corner up and in. Here's Jose Miranda with two out, nobody on. Beautiful curve. Own one. Right, it just makes it so difficult when you have a right hander who can throw across his body. It adds a little bit of deception. You almost feel like as a right handed hitter, he's stepping right towards you and throws across his body with that good slider. Grounded a third on the backhand. Donaldson across the diamond. A one, two, three, eight for Michael King. This game goes to the night. Yankees 10, twin seven. For tomorrow night's game exclusively on Prime Video. We'll have the post game on Yes Afterwards. Saturday on Fox, same deal. Post game on Yes Afterwards. And then the finale back on yes and the Yankees will have an off day and then they'll start a stretch of playing 20 straight days beginning with three at home against the Rays. Well Garrett Cole back in the dugout after his rough start tonight. Allowed five home runs including back to back to back home runs from the Twins to begin this game but the good news for Garrett. The bullpen and the offense has picked him up. Yankees a 10-7 lead here. Top of the ninth inning. Cano will work again. Well, you're right, Ryan. It's a lot easier to deal with a rough outing when your lineup comes back and scores 10 runs, 14 hits. So if you're Garrett Cole, you try to figure out what went wrong tonight, work on it in between starts, and get ready for the next one. Make that flight a whole lot easier tonight if the Yankees can hold on. The only Yankee not at the party yet as our 
outstanding friend Ken Singleton would say is IKF only Yankee starter without a hit. He has been on base. Walk stole a base in the sixth. Holmes getting ready. KF down looking at front door action one away John it's interesting even we've seen it this series we saw it with Cortez as well just seeing the Yankee starters out in the dugout after their outings yeah there are different ways to go about it right but I think the one thing we've seen from this Yankee rotation such a tight knit group yeah and when Garrett Cole was getting loose before the game the rest of the guys were out in the bullpen watching his warm up something that former Yankee CC Sabathia started and a tradition that the team has continued I was talking with Garrett the other day about the way the rotations been pitching and building off of each other and you know in what tangible ways do you actually feel that and he said it's interesting because on one hand you feel a little bit of this pressure to live Keep up going. To, yeah to live up to what the the guy before you did he said on the other hand you feel relaxed knowing if you don't have it the next guy is probably going to pick you up. It is unusual how hot and cold it can go right I mean it was as good as can be and then this series in Minnesota yeah all three all three guys had tough outings on the backhand Urshela two down. Manager Aaron Boone ha has talked about that before. He said, listen, this is all going to come around. At some point, we're going to have to lean on our bullpen like we did early in the year. And the starters are going to get hot again. Gallo, two homers tonight. Two run shot in the second, a solo shot in the fifth. Oh, and two. One, two. Holmes has not pitched since June 4th. He will get the bottom of the ninth. Two two. 
Gallo down on strikes, which sends this game to the bottom of the ninth inning. Holmes looking to lock down a series win for the Yankees. Of the game. Top of the second inning, Joey Gallo with his first home run of the evening. And then later on in the fifth, a changeup that sits middle of the plate, a mammoth blast. Both of those swings are your Chevrolet plays of the game. So Gallo and Hicks both getting going. Good news for the Yankees. And Clay Holmes, his numbers are just silly. 26 inning scoreless streak, longest active streak in baseball, and the longest single season scoreless streak by any Yankee since Mariano Rivera in 1999 did not allow a run in the final 30 and two third innings of the regular season. By the way, Mo that year, which isn't included in the streak, he added 12 and a third more shutout innings in the playoffs. First pitch slider from Clay Holmes, unusual to see. Usually it's a heavy dose of sinking fastballs. One and one. With all of that movement on that two seam fastball, it's amazing that Clay Holmes has only walked three batters all year. The ability to keep that pitch in the strike zone. Look at Higgy behind the plate. Catcher's just pretty much setting up middle of the plate and let that two seamer work. Two and two. Well, you mentioned that streak from Mariano and I, I was just thinking that for a guy like Higgy behind the plate catching Clay Holmes from a game plan perspective is kind of the same thing like catching Mo with Mariano it was cut her in or cut her away was your decision with Clay Holmes it's sinker 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 occasional slider. Chop to Donaldson. One down. Do you like that John mentally as a catcher when you get a break like that and not so many decisions to make. Well it, it definitely makes the game planning very very simple if Clay Holmes has his good two seamer which he's had it since he came to the Yankees. Yeah. It, it's just let's call it let's set up middle of the plate if we throw strikes we're going to get a lot of ground balls. Lindsay Adler of the Athletic was detailing today those percentages with the sinker and you know, right before the Yankees acquired Holmes, he was using it 50% of the time. Since he's been using it over 80% of his pitches. Everybody talks about how different the last three outs of the game are and watching Holmes transition into this closer role you, you couldn't tell the difference if he's pitching the sixth inning or the ninth inning. Another try for Donaldson and the Yankees are one out away from an impressive comeback victory and a series win here in Minnesota. The best deal in mobile. Get unlimited for only $29.99. Visit SpectrumMobile.com. Yankees 13-2-2 in their 17 series played entering this one at Target Field. An incredible start to this 2022 season. 0-1 oh on Correa. I mean that that's 97 miles an hour and just falls straight down 
Correa swings right over the top of it. Oh, and two. Yankees trailed early in this game. Garrett Cole allowed a career high five home runs. Exited in the fourth. Yankees trailed 7 3, but the bats and the bullpen have brought them to the brink of a series win. Lucas Litke settled this game down. The one two. He got him. Ball game. Yankees win the rubber game of this series. 10 7 the final. An impressive comeback win from the Bombers. Another win and another different type of victory for the Yankees. Garrett Cole got roughed up, but the bats picked him up. The relievers for the for the Yankees were lights out. And Aaron Boone can get his club on a plane heading back home with another series victory. Clay Holmes, 27 straight scoreless innings. And it's going to be a lot of smiles in that Yankee clubhouse after a big-time win.